Bravo. 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 Okay, so we have two exciting and experienced showcases in which we've agreed to be. But our first showcase speaker this evening is uniquely trained in two disciplines. She's a physical therapist as well as a clinical hypnotherapist. During her 15 years as a practitioner, she noticed that if left unchecked, stress becomes a highness monster. Is it highness or heinous? Wreaking havoc. I don't know how you pronounce that word. The Oscar Wilde's Just never call her your boy Haynes. Moving swiftly on. She is a public speaking enthusiast and now wants to use her clinical experience to empower people in the management of stress, thereby improving the decision making process and ultimately increasing revenue. With her talk entitled, Why Zebras? Don't get ulcers. Please welcome Diksha Chakra Chakra. scientist by the name of Robert Sapolsky. I've stolen it. Well, kind of borrowed it, but I have sought his permission to do so. This evening, ladies and gentlemen, we are going on safari mm -hmm. in the company of both four-legged and two-legged animals. And we'll see how each handles stress. Now, stress, we know, is a vastly complex topic. I'm just going to give you a really brief overview. And then you will be left to decide how you're going to manage your stress from now onwards. So, there we have our little young zebra quietly munching grass in the African savannah, minding his own business. When suddenly he hears a growl. <laughs> Red alert. He turns to find a little smacking lion not too far away. High stress ensues. What is he to do? Should he stay and fight? And he catches sight of those dangerous spines and claws and he says, I'm out of here. So he decides to take flight. And he begins to run as fast as his little legs will carry him. <laughs> now whilst our little zebra is running to save his life, let's take a look at what's happening to the physiology in his body. There are some systems that are in overdrive. His musculoskeletal system, for instance. It's working at the cost of a fine oil machine, ensuring he can run really fast. His brain is processing billions of messages to ensure that he knows which is his best escape route. His lungs <laughs> is gasping for breath, shoving oxygen to the heart with his beating furiously, sending blood and oxygen and nutrients to the rest of the part of the body. Now you see, nature is a very fine designer. There is absolutely no waste in her system. She's a woman, you see. <laughs> Systems that are not required at this moment of high stress go to sleep mode. And these include the digestive system. Suppose he puts it beautifully. When you are in the danger of becoming someone's lunch, you ain't that bothered about digesting your own breakfast. <laughs> the reproductive system, that zebra is hell-bent on saving his own life. He's not really in the mood to make a new one, so sex is definitely off the agenda. <laughs> the immune system, he might have a few bugs goofing around in his body, but he is going to wait until he's saved his life before attending to those. So finally what happens is there is a huge physiological imbalance in this particular zebra's body. Now, as soon as the chase is over, our zebra quietly goes back to munching grass, very soon, balance is restored and all is well on the African savannah. Now, I ask you, what would happen if either you or I got chased by a sick lion in the middle of Reading Town Centre? <laughs> Outlandish, I know, but please bear with me. There I am in the middle of Reading Town Centre self-debating whether I should go back for that rather heinously expensive but beautiful handbag, when I suddenly note I hear a growl. I turn, and there is my lion. 
Oh my God, what do I do? Do I stay and fight? Or do I turn and run? I cut sight on the fangs and the claws and I thought, I'm out of here. So I start running as fast as my stumpy little legs will carry me. I dart here, I dart there. I keep running all the time looking over my shoulders, trying to make sure I know exactly where my lion is. And suddenly, I can't see him anywhere. Oh, okay. So like the zebra, I go into quiet mode. Wrong. I carry on running. Why? Because he's given up the chase, but he's going to have brethren elsewhere that are going to just pounce on me to catch me unawares. So I keep on running until I collapse in a heap somewhere out of ready. <laughs> then grab my mobile phone, speed down my best friend. Oh my God, Sue, you wouldn't believe what happened to me in the middle of Ready Without Center. <laughs> and then I begin to give her a blow by blow account of my harrowing experience in standing with force. And I might choose to do that with two, three, four, five friends. Finally, I make my way home. That's what I said, get up and make my way home. No sooner am I home than I get onto my laptop and I start blogging about my experience. I make sure it's search engine optimized and I put it on every available social media site going. And then I spend the rest of the day <coughs> engaging with people about my experience only punctuated by very strong cups of coffee to start off with, and as the evening wears on, with copious glasses of wine. Come night time, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted simply telling the story, let alone living it. <laughs> Come night time, I'm tired and I want to go to bed. Sleep evades me. Why? Because I have still got that imaginary light on my tail, and the coffee and the alcohol has kicked in. So it's just sleep, I get nightmares. I wake up in the morning exhausted, of course, Two more cups of strong espresso coffee on an empty stomach and I make my way to work. No sooner do I enter that a very kind soul says, good morning Diksha. Oh gosh, you do look a bit tired. That's it, that's my trigger. I launch into yet another verbal tirade of my harrowing experience that took place almost 24 hours ago. What have I failed to do that the zebra so beautifully did? As soon as that zebra's chase was over, he quietly went back to minding his own business. I, by remaining in that high stress state, have failed to redress the balance of the body. We know life is full of imbalances, right? So you might be, what's a little bit of physiological imbalance? Ain't going to kill me, is it? Mm -hmm. It could, and it did, by far. After three years of high stress under the despot Idi Amin, when we finally got to the UK and we could be a family, and he could relax, his body gave up. Within 24 hours, he had a massive stroke and a massive heart attack, which killed him. Other effects of long-term stress that is unmanaged <coughs> includes anger management, alcohol and drug abuse, bruxism, comfort, grinding of teeth, bruxism, comfort eating, depression, diabetes, type 2, bear with me, for men, erectile dysfunction, high blood pressure, heart attacks, both of which could be fatal, insomnia, IBS, for women, menstrual problems, poor decision making, skin problems, and where we started off from ladies and gentlemen, ulcers. So I asked you to humor me because it's highly unlikely that anybody in this room is ever going to be chased by a lion in the Town Center. <laughs> <laughs> so, however, we do have the equivalent of the African line in the urban savannah. And these include financial worries, difficult relationships, challenges of business, job insecurity, aging parents. So, the problem is unmanaged stress. What then is the solution? The practice of mindfulness. Mindfulness is simple. It's being present in the here and now. Not being plagued by lines of the past, nor fantasizing about the possible demons of the future. It's being present here, enjoying time now. And it's very simple to practice. So shall we give it a shot? <coughs> Just get comfortable in your chairs and close your eyes. Bring your attention to your breathing. Do nothing to manipulate it, ladies and gentlemen. 
simply observe it. Each breath, like each wave on the beach, is unique. And each breath, like each wave on the beach, is regular. And all you need to do is focus on your breath. What this does is it synchronizes your mind and body into one simple activity. And the second thing it does is as you practice this, you get more efficient. Your breathing will automatically be slow. With that, your physiology will automatically be slow. And with that, your body will get that much needed chance to redress its habits. So open your eyes and come back into the room if you will. So here's the gauntlet for you. The next time you're challenged by the myriad expresses that life will throw at you, how are you going to respond? Are you going to go back to your old behaviours and lay yourself potentially at risk of life-threatening illnesses? Or are you going to practice some mindfulness such that like a laughing zebra, you too don't get answers? Your choice. And thank you. Could we have three groups?